This video is made possible by the support of Grim Dark Terrain. Our generous Patreons at Team Titanicorn. And kindly viewers like you. So hello there guys and gals out there in the world wide web. I am Dizzy from Team Titanicorn and as I have been asked a lot, how do I tackle 3D printing on Instagram and uh, several other forums, I've decided to make this video to take you through the whole process. Starting with grabbing the files out of the internet, putting them into the slicing software, printing them, curing them, cleaning them and all the stuff until they are assembled miniatures. Like you can see here on the turntable shot, these are the two Space Marines we'll tackle today. But keep in mind that you can apply all the steps you see and hear today on each and every miniature. You can 3D print single miniature where you print one file and you get your complete miniature or these uh, multi-part kits or even giant vehicles that you need to print with uh, about 250 hours and uh, 50 plus printing plates. Something like this. So I hope you like this video and my explanation. Keep in mind that I'm not a pro or expert on 3D printing. I'm just a guy like you out there that loves to war game and uh, getting his own stuff done on the 3D printer. Down in the video description there are several links beside the uh, Spreadshirt merch shop where you can buy shirts like this awesome design here. You uh, can get all the links to the files I've used in the video and some additional stuff that you might use for your Space Marines if you want to go the Adeptus Astartes way in 3D printing. So enough said up front on the video let's dive right in to the meat of this grabbing the files in the internet have fun so now we are here at my computer and this is the program Cheeto box which I use to get my objects sliced and make some files for printing and these files come in all forms and shapes and from different sources like Cults 3D, My Mini Factory, Thingiverse, and many, many more. In my case, I go for a Badab War Red Scorpion army, and so I got my main parts from Fummelfinger on Cults 3D. This is this user here. He got many designs right now. Awesome sculpts, all true scale. A regular marine is uh, roughly 43 millimeter in height. And he got some stuff like here, this upscale stud lover armor. This is roughly MK5 heresy armor. And you see down here, this one cost you 10 euro. The arms are 4 euro. The pauldrons are for free. Helmets for free. The backpacks for free. And also power knives, swords, chain axes and chain swords are for free too. Then we got MK4 power armor stuff. We got MK3 power armor stuff with breaches shields. We got MK3 without breaches shields. Here is one file. Here is another. Um, I think the only difference is that you got these groin armor plate thingies um, detached as a separate part in this pack but it's basically the same design. Uh, you got some gorgeous Indomitus pattern uh, terminators with uh, several weapons and stuff like this. Just click through all his fine art and uh, there are also some others like a Red Warden miniatures. You see this one here. He got banners, he got shoulders, uh, pauldrons for maybe some Sons of Horus, something like a, a Mechanicum style. You got Ultramarines, uh, different heads, options, power weapons and stuff, stuff, stuff. All to low prices. 
and all of high quality depends on what do you like in style. There are also many other designers out there that give away free stuff on the Thingiverse and so on, but I think um, free stuff could be maybe crappy stuff and this paid stuff often uh, works out to be really nice. So after we check where we can get our files, I prepared a folder, this one. These are some pieces I wanted to print here in this session. Uh, MK4 power armor dudes for the Red Scorpion tactical squads. So I grab myself the bodies and the legs. I grab myself the backpacks and show you how to do it. I just drag and drop them into Cheetah Box. You see it's loading the files and here is the stuff in the scale that it will come out. This uh, blue square here is my uh, printing plate. This is the total uh, size that I can print and um, you just can pr try to print it like this but you need to support all the pieces and uh, get some structure that holds those pieces onto the printing plate and in the most cases you need to flip the pieces back roughly something between 25 or uh, 65 percent as i printed those torsos often i know for sure it is 45 degrees backwards so it looked like this same would be true on the backpack sorry this is the heavy weapon backpack kind of edited myself and uh, the legs there is something of a manual adjustment um, just flip it maybe like this and uh, let us see how it works out so to support this stuff you select this piece go on the upper corner here on this icon this is the window for supporting these are my settings here so you can just uh, pause the video to uh, write down everything and adjust your settings and then i simply click on pause all so i got the raft the piece that sticks to the printing plate and all these small supports that go up to the miniature piece so i think that's it's fine there is no Oh wait, these pieces here, they can go away. There are no need for this supports. So I click on it, uh, just go on delete support, click on it and uh, the delete button. You can also select several of those and get rid of them. So the same thing is true for the legs. Just click on plus all check if everything is fine and i think it is good this small support is needed but i can uh, cut them away with a small exacto knife uh, this one also but this one is in an angle where you maybe don't see it later on the finished model so i will do this on all those pieces and on additional stuff like heads and shoulder pads and show you the ready for printing plate so this is the printing plate right now it is not optimal packed up i like to pack my printing plates up to the brim and uh, maybe go with one plate full of legs and torsos the next one full of arms and weapons and the last one full of shoulder pauldrons and heads and stuff like this and uh, accessories like uh, purity seals and stuff like this. But in this case, for this uh, kind of demo, I go with this few pieces here. A small advice on the shoulder pads. This is a um, shoulder pad for a red scorpion. And it is scaled to the regular Space Marine scale. And if you want to go to Fummelfinger's true scale or his quote-unquote Jugend scale you need to scale this one up uh, something in between 115 to 120 percent I like to go with a hundred and eighteen and uh, this one would fit very well on these arms 
and is this big enough to see to look well on the miniatures so simply auto support this thing put it into place somewhere and uh, when you uh, sort these pieces together it is very important that no supporting structure overlap into uh, pieces that will be printed because uh, you cannot repair those later when it's printed and another advice just print several heads and arms and pauldrons more than you need because there will be some some uh, pieces that broke off when you clean those parts if you're not super super careful so maybe print some pieces more on a printing plate and um, you're good to go so we got a mk4 with a um, possible corvus helmet with the option on a plasma blast gun or plasma pistol for a sergeant here's a bolter and several arms this one is a heavy bolter with a left arm that's hanging uh, on the body's side with a separated hand and uh, the next thing is to slice these pieces and uh, this is the step where the computer make some calculation where to print where to uh, lighten the display while resin printing and these are my settings on a Lego Mars 2 Pro so you can write it down copy the settings I use frozen aqua gray 4k resin this is a 50 euro per liter this is important for the uh, calculated cost of this printing plate these are my settings for printing layer height is 0 0.03 and the exposure time is uh, three seconds this is the most important then we got some lift speed some bottom layer stuff just copy this uh, get it an infill of 40 percent with a 1.1 millimeter uh, wall thickness this will um, cost you less resin than a full print uh, and it's uh, durable enough and on the advanced setting anti-aliasing gray level 4 and image blur pixel 2 you could increase this but I think I'm fine when I use this setting so this next step is just click onto the button slice and wait till it's sliced so here we are this is the window that popped up automatically when the pieces are sliced here are the settings again and uh, we got a uh, volume of 19.74 milliliter this is a weight of 21.7 gram and it will cost me roughly 99 euro cents and will take a time of two hours 29 minutes and 50 seconds estimated this uh, printing time is due to the legs that stick up really high if you only got pieces that are in this height you can uh, just uh, get rid of uh, three quarters of an hour and uh, the higher you go with your printing the more layers you need the longer it takes in this window you can check if the pieces are sliced correctly and here you see where are the hollowed out or gridded out parts and uh, pros could check if there would be some myth mishaps I am not a that professional in this regard so I think the program did well and uh, the next thing is to save this file onto my desktop and I call it um, test print give it some time to write down the file after this i would uh, copy the file to an usb flash drive and then then we see us again at the printer where we gonna go physical the next step this is the corner where the magic happens and this is the flash drive with our file so i just put this down here in the flash drives port give it some seconds to read the stick and then I go on to print 
then I've got a small preview from the files that are on the stick and I search for the test print I got a bit bigger bigger example and I go on this play button so that the printing plate lowers itself and starts printing for uh, the next roughly two and a half hours and uh, then I give the print something around one hour to get uh, rid of all these resin that it could drip off the pieces that are hanging upside down on the printing plate and when this time has passed we see us with the removal of the printed miniatures and uh, keep in mind that i will add this protection cover just after the recording i only want to leave it off to show you how these uh, printing plate is risen and lowered into the resin vat while printing so the print is done and we need to remove it from the printing plate so first and foremost if you work with resin just wear protective gloves and uh, keep your skin safe so keep that in mind when you pour the resin into the vat also remove the protective cover open my little box with a isopropanol alcohol and uh, release this screw here so don't get the resin dripping anywhere instead of the vat and I guess at first glance it looks fine and uh, now I need to use my spatula get off of some of these excess resin here on the side of the printing plate so it's that it doesn't drop anywhere and the next thing just release with some gently strokes on the printing plate your product into the isopropanol alcohol and uh, the next thing is that I run the printer again with another product and while this happens I wash this um, printing pieces here in there for roughly 60 seconds uh, one and a half minutes and then I leave them out uh, on a paper on a paper towel to let them dry and while the printer is already working again these are the prints so far just a bit wet I will leave them to dry overnight but what I can see they turned out really well and uh, there are no lines so far as I can see and um, we check again with a tedious work of uh, removing the supports and hardening the resin prints the final UV hardening and then assembling them so let us wait for some hours but due to the magic of the internet it is just a few seconds for you here are the prints at the working station and uh, I must say they came out really well here is the MK5 Bolter Marine and here is the Heavy Bolter Marine for a Tactical Squad. The thing to do now is release the pieces from the supports and uh, this is a very straightforward. You um, pick some places here and there where are supports and maybe with your nail just press against them that they pop off or if you don't get such nails such long nails uh, cause you uh, file them down uh, you can grab a exacto knife and just cut them away at the model carefully and uh, then you can pop off the miniature push and pull here and there and this is the piece done so next up the body and due to the 45 degrees angle it is very easy to push the things from these support parts then we got the arm 
looks well looks really well we got the uh, shoulder for the red scorpions the one without the riveted piece then we get this shoulder looks good too and uh, the backpack we got the helmet the hands and the bolter this one i will release in a moment next up is uh, checking your pieces for those connection pieces to the support here and there there is a small one just cut it away like this nothing special and uh, on the legs for an example we got a light support there cut away uh, if you recall correctly there is a support in here in this little gap you don't see it so you don't need to do anything there are some small supports here just cut them away also this one and uh, maybe scrape with a sharp blade over the surfaces to get rid, rid of some of the damage here but this is not that bad cause uh, I will work with battle damage later when I paint the miniatures so it is fine i do this with all the pieces and then we will harden them for the final time everything is cleaned up and we need to harden those pieces last time with uv light i pick up my wife's nail design lamps these from jolly Fiend. they uh, can go with a 30 60 or 100 20 seconds a timer or a 120 seconds timer with low heat and um, if I got bigger parts I got a little box filled up with tin foil like this put uh, the pieces on the bottom put the lamps on top but those small pieces could be hardened uh, really easy on a flat surface just put them here like this that you can uh, indicate which side has or has already been hardened and uh, this shoulder is from this guy and then uh, in the best case scenario you get two of those lamps that you can uh, cover the pieces from both sides with a small gap in between where the excess heat of the UV lamps could be released and uh, the pieces don't melt or anything like this and it is fortunate that I got another lamp a second one and uh, I put them over the pieces in my case with the resin I use and the experience I've got I give them two runs of 120 seconds from each side so 200 40 seconds from each side I flip the pieces around after the second run and repeat this and then we can assemble the miniatures so on we go so now I'm ready the UV lamp has done their work and we can proceed gluing all the pieces together there they are as you can see the color changed a bit to a slightly burned sepia gray tone this is an indicator for the heat uh, while i harden the pieces and the important thing when you glue those are dry fitting dry fitting is king cause we work with super glue and in the uh, process of building those you cannot remove the pieces as good cause you uh, break off resin parts sometimes if you want to remove pieces so uh, my, I, I highly I highly recommend to dry fit the pieces before gluing anything so this could be a guy shooting his weapon or holding it down a bit like this maybe and uh, for that i guess i need to just flatten this surface a bit because there is a bit of of an release uh, of a support piece that's not 
removed correctly. And another dry fit, I guess this is okay. Yes, and uh, then uh, grab yourself some super glue. Brand doesn't matter. I take I take army painters super glue for my part here because it's uh, very accessible for me. Just a drop of super glue on one of the pieces, then stick those together like this. Hold them up in place for a moment. And they should stick really fine. Do they? Yes, they stick. Next up, this backpack thing that I modified to work with the weapons. Yes, this one would connect up to the weapon, so there can be another drop of glue applied. Then we glue this one on, like so. If you uh, paint miniatures with um, other colored pieces like only the backpack and got a different color, you just can leave it up painted and uh, glue it on later. In my case, it's all gray and uh, it doesn't matter that much. And then for the positioning of the arm, before this, I would prefer to glue the torso on the leg piece like this. If you print pieces from the Fumal Finger, in, uh, especially, uh, you maybe glue the torso and the legs together, so this part is not needed, because it's already one part, and uh, he stands like this. Then there is the arm that uh, slightly reaches to the weapon with one of my modified hand things attached, maybe like this okay uh or do i use another arm no this is from the bolter guy that's that would not fit um this is the separate self-built hand i uh remixed some of fumble fingers arms there's one piece in the mk5 set where there is an arm that already got a hand attached, uh, attached and I detached the hand only. This is this hand and uh, so I got a slightly reaching pose of a hand. Then I apply this one on this side of the body like this. So just a bit of dry fitting the shoulder. This will work perfectly. So here an additional drop of glue. Push it into the gaps like this. And then there only needs to be a hand detached, uh, attached. Sorry, why do I want to detach everything? Um, this is an irregular MK4, but I don't think I like is this on this one. Maybe I go with an MK6 Corvus helmet like this. And then it stands like this. Oh. Just out of focus. Yes, it's cool. It's cool. And uh, after applying the uh, head, the uh, Space Marine is fully assembled. Then you can go with um, extra gubbins like uh, pouches, like uh, grenades, purity seals, and stuff like this. Then I will apply them on some cork on a 20, you know, 32 millimeter base, and you see the end result like here. And this is the same clip I've shown you. In the intro these are the miniatures the other one is assembled too that you can see here and uh, yes that is the progress uh, progress from I don't got a file but I got a printer up to the miniature I hope you like this summary how I do it and maybe you leave a thought in the comments below we see us again on this channel with English content or maybe if you speak German or like to improve your German speaking you can listen to the other videos on my channel in German so have a nice day we see us in the next one this is Dizzy Finger 
out and keep on wargaming.